Hi everyone, so today we're gonna to be talking about what's called the myocardial infarction, or what's more commonly known as a heart attack. Another name for myocardial infarction is just simply to call it an MI. What happens in myocardial infarction, like the name implies, we have the word myo, that means muscle, cardio, which basically means the heart, so we have the heart muscle, and then the word infarction means there's tissue death. So in a myocardial infarction, we actually get death to the muscle, the heart muscle. So let's talk about what happens here. So if I were to draw a heart, right? And this doesn't look like your typical heart, but we're looking at the heart here. Now, you're looking at the heart of like it's on a person. So this is my right side, that's gonna be the left. Blood comes into the heart, into the right atrium. It goes down to the right ventricle. It goes out to the lungs, comes into the left atrium. And then it's going to go down to the left ventricle. The left ventricle is larger than the right ventricle because the left ventricle pumps blood out to the whole body. Inside the left ventricle, we have a blood vessel. All right, I'm drawing it larger than what it would actually be. This is known as your aorta. And coming off, or the aorta comes out of the left ventricle. And then coming off of the aorta, I have what are known as coronary arteries. Coronary arteries supply blood to the heart muscle. So this is going to be my left coronary artery. And over here is going to be my right coronary artery. So the coronary arteries then what happens is they will start to come down and then coming off of here, I'm gonna have what's called the circumflex artery. Uh, and you can, and Heart attacks can occur in any artery in the body, but then I'm eventually going to get my left anterior descending artery. This is the one that's most common to have a heart attack, is the, is the left anterior descending artery. And what it does is it basically supplies blood to the front part of the heart. So I'm going to go like this, all right, and it's... And the reason I'm coloring these in, this is just to show you where the blood vessels are going. Then just to give you an idea, because we're talking about the aorta, the aorta continues to come out of the heart. It has the brachiocephalic artery that comes off of it, off the aortic arch. I'm gonna have my left carotid artery. I'm gonna have my left subclavian artery. And then the aorta is going to continue down into the body. So again, the most common place to have a heart attack or a myocardial infarction would be the left anterior descending artery. So let's look at what's gonna occur in a heart attack. So let's say this is the inside of my artery now. I know over here I have it drawn going down, but here we're just gonna look at it because it's easier to draw, is like this. So what this is here is atherosclerosis. So this has been building up for a while due to uh, cholesterol, fats, things like that. I have a video on atherosclerosis. And so this is my atherosclerosis. This part in here is soft. What occurs with atherosclerosis is on the outside of it, we get something called a fibrous cap on here. The fibrous cap is basically made up of collagen and has some smooth muscle cells in it also. That, so that's gonna be the blue part here. This part's harder than in here. Now, this whole thing is my artery, right? So even though I have this growing in the artery, I'm still having blood that goes by, right? Blood can get by this, it's just fine. See that? It's going by just fine. However, this is in the way, so it's constantly being hit by blood down here. This blood hits it. So over time, what it actually does is it starts to weaken this fibrous cap. So what eventually is going to occur is the fibrous cap eventually will break open. All right, so here's my fibrous cap and it's broken open now. All right, this is still my fibrous cap right here. But now if you look, my atherosclerosis down in here is exposed. Well, the body looks at this like it's a cut, just like you get a cut on the skin. So what happens when you get a cut on the skin? Your body sends things like platelets and fibrin to basically go in and to form a scab or to, to stop the clotting, and then eventually that becomes a scab. The same thing's gonna happen here. How long does it take for a cut to stop bleeding? If it's not that bad of a cut, it doesn't take that long. 
Same thing with here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to get platelets in here, and I'm going to get my fibrin laying down in here, and more platelets, and more fibrin. All right? And I know it looks like a lot, but remember, these blood vessels are not that thick. And eventually, this all built up. When I say eventually, like I said, how long does it take for a cut to stop bleeding? Five minutes, something like that? Same with this. This occurs within a matter of minutes. Now that we have this built up, blood can no longer get past here. So what does that mean? That means blood cannot get down the artery to get to the heart muscle. All right, it gets cut off almost right away. It's like stepping on a hose, right? So what happens is after about one minute, we get something called ischemia. That means the blood supply to the muscle is cut off. Then what's gonna happen is if, if the blood supply is not put back, what's gonna happen within 20 to 40 minutes, we are gonna get something called necrosis, right? Necrosis is tissue death. Like we said in Farchin, we have, we have necrosis here. So now the heart muscle starts to die. So that's basically what happens in a heart attack. This shows why you have to get someone to care as fast as possible once this has occurred because of the fact that we only have 20 to 40 minutes here before necrosis starts to occur. And necrosis is irreversible. So once that heart muscle dies, you can't uh, bring it back. Anyways, that's it for myocardial infarction, or also known as a heart attack. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.